What is biohacking and is it ethical? You must have heard about Rich Lee. He was a famous biohacker who had implanted a pair of tiny magnets in his ear lobes, which he uses to listen to music without needing any earbuds. Well, there are some more bizarre examples which we will be covering in this session and you better decide whether it is ethical to do or not. Whether it be magnetic implants, microchip implants, bioluminescent implants or LED sensors, all comes with their own set of risks and benefits. Hello Biotechnicals, today we will look into all the types of biohacking and in the end we will analyze whether it is really ethical to do or not. Biohacking is a do-it-yourself biology that helps people make changes in their bodies, diets and lifestyle to enhance physical functionality and to extend their lifespan. It reflects a combination of biology and hacking. In this technology, the individuals can actually hack their bodies to achieve certain goals, which may include improving the physical strength or boosting the brain memory. With the advancement in technology, biohacking is getting popular each day. It includes use of various methods like medical, nutritional or even electronic techniques. Intake of supplements, gene sequencing research in laboratories, wearable gadgets and body implants are all included in biohacking. So what are the different types of biohacking? Any strategy which can be used by a person to improve their biological activities can be considered biohacking. Lifestyle modifications such as dietary changes, breathing practices, meditation and even exercise. These are all most commonly practiced biohacking techniques which people often use to increase physical performance and longevity. Administration of biologics through ingestion, injection or intravenous transfusion is another type of biohacking. Biologics are cellular or biological components which are derived from natural and living sources. While some biologics will require a doctor's prescription, some can be arranged from non-medical source even without a prescription. Technology based biohacking, this includes wearables and diagnostic devices such as smartwatches, blood pressure and glucose monitors. These devices generate a huge amount of physiological data which help biohackers manipulate their health and performances. Many advanced devices are also there such as um, hyperbaric chambers or electromagnetic stimulators. They are also used in technology based biohacking to trigger faster physiological changes or healing. Some biohackers will implant electronic devices, magnets or even radio frequency identification chips in their body to gain new sensory experiences. But the most complex type of biohacking is genetic engineering. Some infamous biohackers, they have done many experiments in this field. And these include full body microbiome transplantation, telomerase gene therapy for anti-aging and even CRISPR DNA injection for muscle strength enhancement. Most of these experiments came under serious criticism and safety concerns by the scientific community. Let's dive into the details for each one of them. First category, common biohacking practices. Under this we have dietary biohacking, energy biohacking, physical health, age biohacking and brain biohacking. Let's look at the first one. The first one is dietary biohacking. We all know how nutrition and supplements play a critical role in our lives. There is a separate category called nutrigenomics in biohacking which tailors the dietary plans of an individual to their genetic makeup. Dietary and nutritional modifications are common biohacking practices and that involves consumption of dietary supplements like antioxidants, essential fatty acids like omega-3 and omega-6, vitamins like vitamin D3, minerals such as magnesium etc and amino acids, prebiotics, probiotics, they are all used to improve metabolism, boost energy production, improve insulin sensitivity, trigger weight loss, improve physical performance, prevent chronic diseases and also increase the lifespan. Dietary biohacking also includes specific dietary patterns. You may have heard of ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting which modulates energy production and metabolism. Understanding the relationship between the human genome, nutrition and health, that is what is nutrigenomics, is a requirement for getting desired health outcomes from dietary biohacking. Another important step includes the continuous use of cellular metabolism monitoring devices such as blood glucose monitoring device or ketone breath analysis. Next is energy biohacking. It is one of the most commonly used categories and frequently includes sleep support and stress relief practices. These two practices are particularly crucial as sleep deprivation and chronic stress can negatively affect overall energy metabolism. 
Light therapy is also used to regulate the circadian rhythm and maintain the sleep cycle. Sleep tracking devices are used to monitor daily sleep patterns. Various meditation apps are also used for sleep support and stress relief. Other techniques that are used include the consumption of vitamin B12 and magnesium supplements, wearing blue light protection glasses and also time restricted caffeine intake. Physical health biohacking. Athletes often look for biohacking modalities to improve their physical performance and trigger recovery from the injuries. Exercise itself is a valuable biohacking method that helps increase mitochondrial biogenesis, cellular energy metabolism, insulin sensitivity and growth factor release. These all collectively support cellular repair and regeneration. Other common physical biohacking methods include cold therapy, heat therapy, whole body vibration therapy, pulse electromagnetic field therapy, even red light therapy for healing, consumption of athletic supplements such as creatine, amino acids, electrolytes and energy drinks. Age biohacking. Apoptosis is programmed cell death, which is very important to maintain the healthy cells in the body. With age, this process slows down, leading to the accumulation of senescent cells. Inhibiting the production of senescent cells or reversing the process of cellular senescence is what is the main idea of age biohacking. Commonly practiced methods include red light therapy, stem cell therapy, cryotherapy, non-ablative laser therapy and also consumption of anti-aging and mitochondrial support supplements. There are popular biohackers which have actually got result with this type of processes. Brain biohacking. Various neurotransmitter modulators such as brain-derived neurotropic factor BDNF, they play important roles in promoting neurogenesis, which is formation of new neurons, and neuroplasticity, which are formation of new connections between neurons. High levels of these modulators in brain are associated with improved cognitive and memory functions and even neuroprotection. Along with increasing BDNF levels, which can be done through exercise, Brain biohackers often rely on consuming nootropics such as caffeine, L-theanine, modafinil. These enhances their cognitive efficiency. Additionally, compounds like NMN and NAD plus boosters, they have gained attention for their potential anti-aging and metabolism boosting as well. Other common practices include brainwave entrainment, transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy, neurofeedback therapy, brain work, even brain games and meditation. Those were the common biohacking practices. Now let's look how biohackers are letting technology get under their skin to achieve some of the impossible things. Human body is a temple, but some people see it as a source of frustration. Because of the considerable limitations compared to the powerful technology which we get today. Thus, there are people who are called as biohackers or even grinders who have designed new experiments to enhance human body with technology. You can see how a safety pin is able to get attached to with the finger skin, just the finger skin. Now, how is that possible? Obviously, there is some magnetic implant in under the skin. So, we have some kind of electrical implants, a simple radio frequency transmitter which was available back from 1990s also. They were able to open doors and switch on lights with just a wave of any arm. Perhaps the most common implant tried out is the radio frequency identification device which is RFID. More recently in the form of a near field communication version. This essentially is the same technology that is used in contactless payment cards except that it is packaged in a small tube and that will be like the size of grain of a rice. In fact, in uh, January 2015, it was reported that in Sweden, several hundred officers were chipped. They had implants under their skin which was put in place by some tattoo artist and workers were able to open doors and even switch on the Xerox machines by themselves. So let's look at some magnetic personalities that have done some unimaginary things. For biohackers, the range of possible technology that can be implanted is very broad and imaginative. So one was software developer and biohacker Tim Cannon who had a variety of implants and his latest was the uh, North Star which will light up when a magnet is close by. His company was there in Pittsburgh who, which actually develops technology for different biohackers. And not only software developers, even artists also get in on the act. Moon Ribas has a seismic sensor implanted in her elbow 
that allows her to feel the earthquakes through vibrations meanwhile neil harbison who is otherwise color blind has an antenna which is known as the eye borg it has been attached to his head since 2004 this eye borg includes four implants two for antenna one for vibration and one for bluetooth that connects to the internet with the help of this device he can hear the light frequencies of the spectrum along with the infrared and ultraviolet he can also receive the colors from satellites and phone cameras and even receive phone calls directly into his head then there is something what is cochlear implant it's more of a, a medical procedure where a chip is implanted inside the ear nerves of deaf people the chip uses several electrodes to translate sounds which are received from a microphone and converts them into electrical signals that are then sent to the brain the audio quality is not as good as we hear with a normal ear but the person can clearly hear it without lip reading but the most advanced example has to be what is now called as neurohacking this involves modifying the brain or nervous system back in 2002 there was a brain gate device implanted into a person's um nerves in the arm to enable them to control a robot hand via a internet just using their thoughts it also gave them an extra ultrasonic sense so that as an object came closer to them the electronic pulses stimulating their brain increased in frequency recently the same implant was used in a therapeutic role to allow a paralyzed individual to regain some control over his own arm next are electronic tattoos So although these are not actually implants but they will still bring some integration between the human body and technology these kind of tattoos can gather the biometric data of the body through sweat and monitor the heart rate which is then sent to the desired device also you have something called as circadia it is an implantable device that sends the biometric data of the body to the phone or tablet via bluetooth and is powered by inductive charging this was developed by grindhouse wetware crazy isn't it so what is the future of biohacking i will not disagree that radio frequency identification technology rfids they definitely make our lives more convenient they will allow contactless opening of doors and cars payments computer logins and storing all the personal and medical informations so there are some potential benefits neurocontrol prosthetics electronic tattoos magnetic implants they not only enhance the existing capabilities but also offer to have something which we never could have availed otherwise but there are still a lot of limitations regarding the extent to which humans can carry out such experiments because of the obvious safety concerns in in spite of all this the pace at which we are progressing is indicating that soon we can have some extra bunch of capabilities and sensors which will become very common so by next two decades it might be possible that humans will carry artificial parts and organs and not only that they can also carry nanobots which will flow through the blood streams and kill all the infectious viruses it would also may become common to have superhuman capabilities like uh, what we see in cyborgs in movies now while biohacking holds great promise for personal enhancement it's not without its darker aspects the risks and controversies surrounding the practice particularly in the do it yourself biology experiment area on the human body that requires a cautious approach it's crucial to consult medical professionals before you decide to go on any such uh, new biohacking endeavors so that you ensure safety and suitability for individual health requirements especially when considering any existing medical conditions the us fda has in fact released a guidance document concerning implants they stated potential risks of adverse tissue reactions migration of the transponder electromagnetic interference information compromise mri incompatibility and also failure of the implanted transponder one of the most common uh, risk is that infection chips and implant are considered a foreign body currently most often introduced by non medical professionals such as tattoo artist now this raises question about the sterilization of such procedures similar to other medical devices the implantation of an rfid chip carries the risk of a foreign body related infection a variety of microorganisms may be involved uh, as pathogens like uh, s aureus is the most frequent because s aureus has the ability to adhere to materials 
and form a biofilm so in case this happens in the body there will be no other option left but removal of the foreign body because even antibiotic treatment alone will be ineffective and if neglected delayed diagnosis of such hand infections can also result in poor outcomes with functional deficits Apart from that there has also been multiple studies to uh, see the effect of MRI on such implants and the chips in the human hand for example one can only imagine what will be the possible difficulties that such kind of artifacts can raise in diagnosing pathologies now let's come to the ethical part well the ethical considerations are as complex as the practice of biohacking itself and efforts to establish a code of conduct for biohackers it can range from legislative actions to community self regulations ethical discussions focus on the consequences of experimenting with human dna at home using technology that's now widely available and current examples of such experiments also raise concern first is informed consent and self experimentation in biohacking autonomy is central they will do it on their own but informed consent becomes very important individual should fully understand the risks benefits and potential consequences of their actions for example a biohacker decides to implant a magnet under their skin to sense electromagnetic fields so they should document the process include potential complications and share it online others considering similar implants can learn from their experience and make informed choices safety and risk mitigation biohacking innovations often lack rigorous clinical testing while this ability allows for rapid progress but it also raises some major safety concerns which we discussed in the previous slide equity and access biohacking technologies can be expensive and that can create disparities ethical considerations demand that advancements should benefit all not just those with financial resources as with any other biotechnological inventions example a biohacker develops an affordable wearable disease for monitoring glucose level they can release the design and the code as open source so that others can also build their own devices and improve the health outcomes as biohacking tools become more powerful the risk of unintended consequence they will grow ethical biohackers must consider dual use scenarios where their innovations could be misused also for harmful purposes and that can even lead to bioterrorism biohacking community thrives on collaboration and shared knowledge so ethical biohackers should be transparent about their methods results and intentions accountability ensures that the community benefits collectively and not just individual so the conclusion is as we have explored the vast landscape of biohacking it's clear that this movement is not just about pushing the boundaries of human capabilities it's about understanding and optimizing our biology today's technology and especially silicon valley has influenced the growth of the biohacking movement making sophisticated techniques accessible and fostering a culture of experimental application beyond professional labs despite the legal and safety concerns although biohacking is a powerful tool to support physical and mental health promotion but some forms of it including genetic manipulations and self administration of unregulated drugs can present serious public health risks the authorized scientific community should actively engage with the biohacking community to ensure the safe and secure application of scientific approaches and also to prevent unethical and illegal use of biological materials let me know in the comment section what is your take on this thank you